with another Drekkerfest beer review. What do we got on tap? Today's beer, Out of the Bag. It is a coconut key lime pie sour. She put the lime in the coconut, she drank them bowl. She put the lime in the coconut, she drank them bowl. She put the lime in the Done a collaboration with Southern Grist Brewing, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, boo Preds, boo. Boo Preds, boo. Let's roll it out a little bit. Go Soros. Go Gotta little. roll it out. I know Drecker likes to uh, bottom load a lot of these things. So. See, I'd be terrified to do that in a studio like this. Everything's a washable. Bro, look at that. Everything's look washable that. in this joint. I keep it tidy. I keep it clean. Holy coconut. Oh look at my just, goodness. Wh- what did we say that was? This is coconut a key. coconut key yeah. lime pie sour. All right, boys. I thought this was all foam at first, but no. Nope. You can see the little coconut floaties you in there. Like that doobie floaties. liquid. Oh my goodness. Cheers, guys. Cheers, boys. Whoa. See, no, okay. I, I know Ooh. Drecker, they have, you know, their sours, and some of them aren't literally sour. This one, like, it, it's just like taking a lime and going. Yeah, that's deceptive. I on the nose, I was getting punched in the face with coconut. coconut. And then on the flavor, like I'm not a coconut guy. Sure. It's lime. On the flavor, it's lime, it's lime, mango. See, I love lime. I, that's though. so weird. That no, like that's just weird. I was not expecting that. Not guys, I drink a lot of I drink a lot of beer. There's there's definitely a texture and a consistency that goes to it too, and not in a bad way. Like I don't mind that. For me though, it was like Jordan said, where I definitely smelled coconut. My first taste was coconut. It almost like lured me in and tricked me. Because <laughs> my first like maybe that half tricks-y. second to a second, we got the coconut and then it was bam, lime, heavy. It's citrus. It's citrus uh, and I don't ever go for anything coconut. I don't go for anything uh, that generally has that consistency. I am, I am a, Make IPAs clear again is my uh, most recent so, so, so mantra. Let me ask you something. Okay. We're, we're not on the same mantra. If there. you landed, <laughs> if you landed on the beach of Fiji playing Survivor, you would just not eat versus eat coconut. Oh, see, context is key, my friend. <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm just asking. There's no, some people who no. like, can't even can't even smell. It's, like I, I cook with coconut oil, and some people can't even stand it because they like right away like no. Nope. No, <laughs> I don't feel that intensely okay, okay. about coconut. Okay. I would prefer to have things other than coconut though. Um, coconut is not going to be my uh, top 10 choice at all for any flavor or so combination funny. of anything. But this is, like I said, bizarre. And I hate to sound like a 58-year-old woman named Sue, but like that's the only type of person I know that uses the word bizarre. Look at it. It's starting days. to separate a bit now. And it's just, yeah, it's, it almost looks like a potion. Oh, it right, is getting into spooky season. Right. We are getting into Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter viewing season, aren't we? What's the be- oh, quick? Ten seconds. What's the best Harry Potter movie? Oh, uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. Hands uh, down. Fellowship of the Ring. Oh, get the uh, fuck see. The out thing of is, is those are both right answers. <laughs> I do like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Sorry, my only nerd edge is Lord of the Rings. Empire Strikes Back. I don't care. Oh about yes. It. Yeah. Even no. though I have to say, Return of the Jedi was filmed on Vancouver Island, so I'm a little. Uh, bit... Episode one is actually the best Star Trek movie. Period. The final battle scene. Oh. Actually, the score in episode one, I'll give it to you that. The score, I mean, yeah, he outdid himself. <laughs> Jordan's concussed. I'm about to have an aneurysm <laughs> about what you just said. Uh, which, one made you more, which one made you more mad, episode one or Star Trek? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Back on track here, boys. Live long um, and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this is the West Coast. <laughs> Whoops, that's a gang sign. Yeah, let, nope, we're not we're doing that. We're blurring that out on YouTube. The yes. famous Dumbledore quote. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Out of the bag, out of the bag. Yes. Drecker Fest collaboration with Southern Grist. The, the can art's not as fucked up as the last one, but... Not a little bit. But a little bit. All of them are. Um, all right, as you guys take another sip and make sure nothing tastes a little different, uh, for out of the bag, it's either cats out of the bag or let the cat out of the bag, depending on context. And this is really context. just to reveal a secret carelessly or by mistake. I didn't find any cool stories like I did. Unfortunately, with uh, 
cat's got your tongue. But uh, Isha, any last thoughts here on the beer before we hit the hockey? Um, I talk like we talked ourselves. Or talk, I talked myself out of coconut. All I taste is lime now. <laughs> That's it. Agreed. And it's also not as sour now that I'm like prepared for it. Eh, it's it got kinda, a saltiness it to it. Me actually, I know, it's, it's just as sour. But yeah. I like it. But I like it. I'm a freak. Like I just eat limes like oranges. So like I don't. This yeah, is you're, actually you're really good. bizarre. It's and anything weird. different for you? Uh, nothing different for me. I I just stand by what I said earlier. The uh, <laughs> aroma is dramatically different than the flavor, and I much prefer the flavor because it has very little coconut. Actually, there you go. But again, I don't go for thicker style beers like this. Sure. So this is a uh, me me uh, trying to compartmentalize. So this is like a this is a complete trip for you. It's like, a little bit like I and literally. see the thing is, boys, in in my line of work, I. I am around a lot of different beers, and I will generally just drink what I like. And yeah, this is a uh, this is a realm in which I don't generally delve. So okay. I'm uh, I'm happy to come you on fit the, the journey director with you. mold though with the beard and glasses. I have to say I'm blind and I have hair. I don't know, <laughs> like <laughs> like uh, yeah. This, we we look like this not for any particular reason, but boy. I shaved for this podcast. Just saying, this. I did too. <laughs> I know. And you already have, like, basically... Ah, uh, yeah. This is... Yeah. I would say this is... Four weeks. Four weeks. Nice. 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 Yeah. Right. Anyway, on the note of uh, first, facial hair, let's drink more beer. <laughs> that's right. Now, first hockey topic here, Isha, for cats out of the bag. I mean, Brock Faber and how good he is. Let, let's be honest. I mean... So, uh, how soon do you think that that's going to transpire? Oh, I think... As early as game one, two, three, we're, we're going to see... I, I think a lot of people are going to see how just stable he is out there and start being like, oh, yeah, this is our guy. We never needed Dumba. Dumba, you know, abandoned defense all the time. At least this guy, you know. And, and I think that's going to be, especially on, like, wild Twitter. But how many points will he have? That's going to be a huge narrative. But then, <laughs> yeah, but then on the opposite side, everyone's going to be like, oh, but he's not scoring like Fiala is in yeah. L.A. No, this is a top... Def- like potentially like a, a star defenseman, like floor, a, a top four defenseman in the National Hockey League. And I feel like anybody outside the Minnesota Wild market, outside the LA Kings market, outside those like crazy NHL like, draft nerds. I don't think many LA Kings fans knew who the hell he was. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people now are starting to to, under, to understand who he is, and like this regular season hasn't even started yet. That's just with the likes of you know TSN in Canada and Sportsnet and all the, well ESPN a little bit down here, but uh, everyone just talking about him this preseason and going into the season, and not to mention his tremendous time with the Gophers. Not tr- not to mention, I, I don't want to say it was a coming out party this year, but his really good showing in the World Juniors for an American team that didn't really play up to par. Brock Faber was like a shining star still. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to flip it and this is like 50% how I actually feel and 50% very wishful thinking. <laughs> but for me, cats out of the bag on a substantial salary cap increase coming. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, keyed away by Bill Guerin who just gave bundles of money to both Matt Zuccarello and Marcus Felino and Felino's four by four has people pretty upset. Well, guess what? If we find out that the cap's going up like six mil, people are gonna calm down a little bit, I'm especially not. as it continues to go up more and more. Isha's never gonna calm down because that's not in his nature. No. But um, I don't know. I that's a good one though. That's I, a good one. I hope that that's uh, part of what's going on behind the scenes there. Like you know that Batman's just like. Bill, I told you you couldn't tell anyone about that. That was between us. He's like, I didn't tell anyone technically. Well, before the world sickness of 2023 that you're not allowed to say on YouTube anymore, um, <laughs> the cap was projected to go up quite a bit, right? Like that next season. Yeah. And then, boom, the season shuts down. And it's like, damn it. Not only do we not know when hockey's coming back, when sports are coming back, but this is going to put this whole you know, scenario where the league's going to grow and we're going to have more money to get free mm-hmm. agents. And that's to- that totally like, you know, years years back now. It's, it's set the league two, three, four years back as, as far as their plan to, to do that. So I know what I think about uh, Matt's and about Marcus. What what do you guys think the front office sees in those top two players? Like th- these guys are... I wouldn't like you don't throw around the word dynasty player a lot 
and I don't think they are, but like, what do you think the value is? What does the front office see in these guys? Dynasty player just smacked me harder than this lion bear did. <laughs> oh my God, I was terrified. Uh, I mean, both very different things. Uh, Matt Zuccarello, I don't have a problem with that contract. Let's be clear. And I really don't have a huge problem with the Felino one. I'll take Zuccarello. Isha, you can have Felino. Zuccarello is playing well with Kaprizov, right? They're not only good buddies. Well is an understatement. He's yes. playing outstanding. And there's yeah. an argument yeah. to be had that, yes, Kaprizov is iron. Sharpens iron. Play better, yeah. but it, iron sharpens iron. Like yep. Kaprizov is also benefiting from playing with Matt Zuccarello. And I don't know, a two-year deal. And it takes us through to uh, the end of the quote-unquote cap hell. I don't have a problem with it for the discount that he took. And I think that's a lot of what people are seeing too is, oh, he's making less. And now, oh, Marcus Foligno's making more, even though they both land in a similar spot. Um, and again, the offense and the numbers that come with it stand out in a different way for Zuccarello. Mm. Yeah, and, and I get with Foligno, like he's coming off two unbelievable years. I mean, last year, not really because he, well, last year he was riddled with injuries, but the, the two years prior, like his best seasons in the National Hockey League really, really solidified himself as a leader mm. for this team um, and and actually found some of his scoring touch on a third line, on a shutdown line first and foremost. So I understand like where him, his agent, his, his whole team is coming from, like, this is the best hockey he will likely ever play. You're going to capitalize on it, and you want to be paid for that. Un unfortunately, but fortunately for the players, that's kind of how contracts are signed these days. It's not for what you're... You're not signing for what you're going to do. You're signing for what you have done for the most part. And and I think that's what it was. It's... I would have preferred to see, A, if he could stay healthy for at, at least a few months this season or a couple months this season before talking extension because... Either him or Hartman, and we've talked about this on our podcast before, they're vital trade chips for this team right now mm. when they have uh, a ton, an embarrassment of riches of prospects who they can, who they need space for eventually. So that that's only that's, my, that's my issue with it was like Hartman or Felino, one of them had to be traded this year in my mind. And now that's, that's, that's not going to happen. Neither. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. how I feel. I like filtered. Wow. I this love it. This was unfiltered too. Yeah, this I was very unfiltered. Like this. this can isn't see-through and I can still that, see how that thick this is. That was not planned ahead, Isha. Well done. I know. Like usually you're like a little things like that. Like it's usually like you have it like written down all caps, like <laughs> ready to go. So this I, have I have my moments. I have my moments. Get this guy on a segue because he's the king right now. <laughs> a little top off for all of us and then we'll just uh, shoot it as we finish it out. Mm-hmm. Hey, cheers to... To Dracker Fast. Out of the bag. Out of the bag.